What is this place? Just sit tight, old kiddo. Like everything here, we'll have you turn. <laughs> Snow angels, yes. Hey guys, I'm going to show you another sequence I worked on that kind of uses the same process of the one I just showed of using grease pencil objects parented to cameras. And what I do is I can switch between those cameras in order to play the different sequences at different timings. In order to do that, I have to go up to the scene collection, uh, make sure my camera 2 is back on. And I go into the view tab and make sure that it is the local camera. Switch that to camera 2 and there we go. We're on the sequence that I want to work on. So in this shot, you can kind of see already laid out a drawing. And one thing I want to kind of point out is how you can organize your layers to kind of simplify the process. If you look at the layers at the right hand side of the screen, you can see where I can um, move character layers that are like the lines and then the fill layers beneath the lines. And by keeping those layers separate, I can manipulate and change them individually without having to change the other layer. And so that kind of cleans up the process a bit. Um, so here I'm just kind of drawing the background. And one thing I want to point out too is that you can ch change the opacity re really easily by sliding over the, the opacity tab on the right so that you don't have to keep changing the color and then that'll keep it at the same value. That way you can differentiate which layer you're on. So here I'm using a 3D grid I made to kind of use as reference for my grease pencil background drawing here. Here I'm just going to draw the top shelf real quick and use that grid to adjust my perspective of my drawings. So right now I'm on the background layer and so most of the changes will be edited into the into that background layer on where it says BG. And I'm using the pen tool here. Like I discussed in uh, some of my past videos, using the pen tool is pretty useful because it keeps the same line width compared to the rest of the brush pens that have tapering to them. Sometimes they have textures to them. I don't really need that when I'm like storyboarding. I just want to keep the line width the same. That way I can just focus on blocking in the characters and the, the background and props in the scene. So this background I'm drawing, he's on a conveyor belt for a grocery store. And what I'm drawing behind him is kind of like the props for uh, the tray for like gum. Yeah, one thing I want to point out is by changing the opacity, I can have the character pop out more by having him have a higher opacity at 1 while keeping the background a lower opacity at 0 0.5. You can see here I'm kind of pointing out the um, the different layers. I'm, I'm making a new layer here, I think. Um, yes, I'm making a layer here for the, the fill for the background. And then here I'm adjusting the opacity how I want it so that it falls behind the line. Or it's, it's lighter than the line. And you want to make sure you're on the right layer while you're drawing so that you keep your your workflow clean.
just doing a simple wash so that I can pop out the, the character more. If you're new to storyboarding, you generally keep your tones minimum to two or three just to kind of simplify the, the boards. Usually um, a light wash like this for the background, maybe a medium wash for the, the mid-ground, and then like a dark wash for the foreground. And the cool thing is that you can adjust this with the opacity tab. It's very uh, modular. You don't have to change the color every time. You need to change everything globally. I mean, you can render the image to kind of test out how the uh, shot will, will look. So uh, I go into the um, the output, make sure I'm in the right folder to export to, and then I click render image, and then I can kind of see how that um, shot looks as a JPEG. Looks pretty good. And here you can kind of scrub through your timeline. Sometimes it helps to lock your layers, so you want to make sure that you're on the you're editing the right layer. So I just wanted to work on the character layer here, which is my character layer. And then by selecting the the grease pencil object that is represented by the character layer, I can adjust it separately on the timeline. Feature useful called additive drawing. It looks like a snowflake on top. And it's useful because it can automatically duplicate what you've drawn to other keyframes. So if you just want to tweak and draw over another frame, you can do that really easy with additive drawing and then just erasing the strokes that you want to change. You'll notice there's a white dot above the timeline and that represents the record button. So if you click that, and as you see here, it's highlighted in blue, it will record the changes that you make on a separate keyframe automatically. So you don't have to do shift I keyframe. So with the record button on and the additive drawing feature on, it allows you to adjust drawings in keyframes a lot more easily and more automatic. Here I'm just kind of tweaking it down to show the pass between the walk cycle. And here I can use the timeline to kind of scrub through my animation. And then I can go back into draw mode and then redraw the legs for the, the pass. Like I said in the last video I did, the benefit of using vector-based lines in Blender is that I can erase the strokes really easily and then just redraw them for the other frames. It saves me time because I don't have to erase the line pixel by pixel. And we can see a little bit of what represents a walk cycle. So I'm going into the fill layer here to kind of adjust the, the fill. What I realized through this process is I probably want to do the fill after I, I do animation on the lines. That way I don't have to kind of redo it. I can just add the tone after I animate the lines. I'm 
and just adding in the fill so that the character pops out a bit more. And then here I can just scrub through the frame or scrub through the frames to see the animation. And that's the one cool thing about Blender is that you can just drag the timeline back and forth and it'll animate in real time. It's really cool. Here I'm just rechecking the layers, making sure I'm drawing on the right one. I had little dust effects for him running but I put on the mid-ground layer. I think I should have had it on a separate layer, but that's for another time. So I kind of wanted to show the dust particles kind of leaving or trailing behind his feet. So this is what I'm doing. I'm just um, straight aheading these. Yep, looks good. There's a useful feature under the view window called the lock and you can click that where it says camera to view and what that does is it, it locks your camera to your viewport. So if you're moving around your viewport in the scene, um, the camera will follow. And the reason why I have it parented to the camera is because then if I want to bring this to 3D I can just block in, adjust my objects to where the storyboarding is in the camera. Yeah, it looks pretty good. And if you see on the, the left hand side, that's a different sequence I'm working on. And how that works is I have another separate grease pencil object with its own layer groups parented to a separate camera. I think it's camera one. Okay, here I'm just tweeting these foreground objects so that they slide along this conveyor belt. But they're on the MG layer right now. So so what I want them to do is pass left as he's running. So it looks like the conveyor belt is moving left. Uh, and I'm using the lasso tool for the selection. I found that more useful to use the lasso tool because I can kind of wrap around different shaped objects better than a rectangular kind of selection. And then I'm constraining the move, pressing G and Z so that it constrains it to that one direction. Here you can see I accidentally drew um, or I adjusted on the wrong keyframe, keyframe 11. So what I can do is I can just slide that over to the correct keyframe and sh that should fix it. Uh, this one object didn't move quite as far, so I kind of want to adjust that. What I did there real quick is I went into my camera. So I had to select my camera and go down to viewport display, pass per root, bring that all the way to one. And what that does is make everything around your camera black so it looks more cinematic. So when I'm ready to render the animation, um, I go up to the tab called render, drop down to render animation. going into the output and making sure I can output it to where I want it to be. I usually keep things in one folder just to keep things simple to find. Uh, make sure I change it to the right video format. 
which is a MPEG-4, MP4. Render out the animation. And looks good. I got an MP4 animatic that I find I'm happy with and it's in the right folder. I rename it. You can see I already have the other first story beat here. Yeah, just showing in the upper right that I have those two sequences separate, um, parented to different cameras. And just to organize them, I'm going to keep them in different collections. Because the cool thing about Blender is you can transfer assets by transferring collections. So I'm just organizing this so that in the future, if I want to go back to one of these store beats and I can just bring them into another file, I can by appending them. And that basically covers for this walkthrough, this sequence I made using Grease Pencil and Blender. Make sure to subscribe and follow if you want more Grease Pencil content. I'm going to keep working them out and maybe I can be more elaborate on tutorials later on. Thanks for watching.